Come on downstairs to Mama's Basement. We're continuing our Minnesota Twins franchise. It's the final series before the All-Star break at home at Target Field against the Philadelphia Phillies. Three-game series, then we head into the All-Star intermission. We're going to take a look at the standings before we get into this one any further. The Red Sox are six games behind the Jays. The Rays 12 and a half back. Over here in the Central Division, we have moved into a tie for fourth place. The Indians are two games ahead of the Royals and four games ahead of the Tigers. The Mariners, two and a half ahead of the Angels, three and a half over the Astros. Rangers, five and a half. And the A's, six and a half back. The Nats, a double-digit lead on the Miami Marlins. The Braves are 15 back. The Mets and the Phillies, 16 and 16 and a half, respectively. The Cubs, eight and a half ahead of the Cards, 10 over the Pirates, who are fading a little bit, three and seven in their last 10. And out in the West, the Dodgers, seven and three in their last 10, a seven and a half game lead over the Giants, 12 games over the Colorado Rockies. Game number 87 of our season, the second season of Minnesota Twins franchise. Tyler Chatwood starts for the Twins. He is one and seven with a 6.11 ERA. In 45 and two-thirds innings, a 1.58 whip for Tyler Chatwood. And his opponent in this one will be Jared Eikhoff, making his 17th start. He's 4-2 with a 4.88 ERA. 86 and two-thirds innings, he's given up 83 hits and 29 walks. 74 strikeouts on the year for Eikhoff. We get this one underway in the first inning. Michael Franco batting 236 with 12 home runs and 41 RBIs. Runner on the move. And here's the throw down to second. It is high into the third base side of the bag. And the Phillies still the base there. 3-2 count. Here's the blooper into right field. Runner heading from second around third. And he's going to come around to score very easily. And the Phillies jump out to the one to nothing lead on the RBI single. Second inning. Kenny Vargas, batting 296 with eight home runs, 26 RBIs. Nobody on, 0-1 count, and Vargas drives it deep to right center field. That one is up there, it's back, and it is gone. A home run for Kenny Vargas. A solo shot will tie up the game at one. Ninth home run of the year for Vargas. At the end of two, we're all tied up. We go to the third. Chatwood's delivery with a runner on first, driven to right center field. That one's going to find the gap. Runner around second, heading to third. Buxton gets it in. Runner heading around third to the plate. And the throw after uh, Jorge Polanco hesitated a bit. He just hangs on to it. It's 2-1 to one Phillies. Here's another drive into the gap. Run comes in to score easily. And it's 3-1 to one Philadelphia. Buxton gets it in to the cutoff guy quickly, but no play at second base. It is a RBI double for Joseph. Tommy Joseph, it's three to one. Phillies with the lead. Here's the drive deep to right field. That one's back. And it is gone just barely over the overhang. Cody Ashey with his ninth home run of the year. It's a two run home run. And the Phillies have jumped out to a five to one lead. Trevor May comes on now in the fifth inning for the Twins. 36th appearance. He's 2-5. and five. Runners on the corners and nobody out. Ground ball through the right side past Dozer. Here is Rosario. Gets it back in, but a run comes in to score again, and it's quickly 6-1 to one in the middle of the fifth. Eddie Rosario at the plate now. Batting 245, 11 home runs, 23 RBIs. And he lofts this one into left center field. It's fading away from the outfielder. Gets over the top of his head. Runner coming around third and heading to the plate. Rosario is into second with a double and an RBI. And at 6-2 to two at the end of five, do the Twins have a comeback in them? Eighth inning, Brett Oberholzer on the mound for the Phillies. 2.60 ERA. And he's facing Kenny Vargas, who's already homered once in the game. Runner on second with two outs, Vargas. Line drive into the gap. That one, two hops the wall. Runner is going to score. Vargas is heading to second. It's like a semi-truck going uphill into second base. He does make it, but the Phillies end up with the win, 6-3. to three. They improve to 39-48. and 48. We lose our 51st game of the year. Tyler Chatwood with another loss. He falls to 1-8, strongly considering possibly bringing up Jose Barrios. 
because Tyler Chatwood is just getting pummeled at the major league level. All right, we're going to take a quick look at a little GM business. We're taking a look at outfielders and specifically left field within our organization. First off, Eddie Rosario is the current starter. He's a 79 overall, 25-year-old from Puerto Rico, good contact hitter, good power, hits well against both lefties and righties. He's a very solid outfielder. Uh, his arm is actually a lot stronger than uh, MLB The Show gives it credit for right there. And he has got two years, $700,000 contract. Robbie Grossman is after him, and he is at AAA. He's 68 overall. Uh, he's very much expendable, 27 years old from California. Uh, probably not going to contribute to our team a lot as far as making a playoff run. And he's got two years of $550,000. It might not be bad to unload that. We don't need to pay huge numbers at the AAA level. Andrew Tolis, decent contact hitter. Not a great fielder, though. He does have some speed, though, at 83. He's a 61 overall, 24 years old, $70,000 renewable contract. Adam Walker, potential is a B. This guy is a little intriguing. His power numbers are very good, 77 against righties, 66 against lefties. Again, not a great fielder, though. Somebody that you stick out in left field because his bat will contribute. $80,000 a year, 25-year-old. Uh, down at AA, Chattanooga, Travis Harrison. Average hitter, not a great fielder. His potential is a C. He's 24. Uh, pretty good arm strength at 73, uh, better than Rosario's. And Travis Harrison is also on a $70,000 renewable contract. And down at single A, Fort Myers, Trey Vavra. Uh, average hitter, probably not going to improve a ton. His ceiling is a C. 25 years old, that's not a good age to be at single A still. And he is a $60,000 a year guy. So those are... That's what we have within our organization at the moment. Game number 88 now, the second one between the Phillies and the Twins. Seems like the last four or five series, we've lost the first two games and come back and won the third. We'll see if we can buck that trend here. Alex Meyer starting for us. 18th start of the year for him. Charlie Morton also making his 18th start. He's got an ERA of 5.00. 90 innings for Morton. 68 strikeouts. Charlie Morton patterned his delivery after the great Roy Halladay. His delivery looks very similar. Now he's playing for Halliday's, uh, one of Halladay's teams. Freddie Galvis into the box, and Galvis is going to drive this one deep to right field. That one is either high off the wall or gone, and it is going to be gone by a hair into the flower gardens up there on the edge of right center field. Six, uh, fifth home run of the year, sorry, for Freddie Galvis. And the Phillies jump out again to an early lead. We go to the second inning. Jorge Polanco, 295 with a home run, six RBIs. Runners on the corners with two out, 0-1 count. Here's the delivery from Charlie Morton. And Polanco slices it into right field. The run's going to come in to score, and the game is tied. We go to the fourth. Jorge Polanco at the plate again with the runner on first and one out. Polanco drives a hanging fastball to right field. And that one is up into the stands. Sorry, that wasn't a fastball. What am I saying? That was a hanging curveball. Fastballs don't hang. Hanging curveball, Jorge Polanco, a two-run home run, second of the season for him. And that puts the Twins out in front by a score of 3-1 to one at the end of the fourth. We go to the fifth now. Dylan Cousins up for the Phillies, batting 249. Here's the delivery from Alex Meyer. It swung on and missed by Cousins. And Meyer's having himself a pretty good outing, giving up three hits in the first five innings and only one run. Here's Kenny Vargas now in the bottom of the fifth. Runner on first, Vargas. Hits this one high. Hits this one deep. Hits this one out of the yard. Kenny Vargas, a two-run home run, 10th of the season. And second... In as many games, Mark Appel comes in now to relieve Charlie Morton. He's facing Danny Santana. Still in the bottom of the fifth, Danny Santana with one home run on the year. He's going to get a hold of this one. He sends a high into right field. He put a charge into it, and it is gone. 
Danny Santana with just his second home run of the season. So we have Jorge Polanco hitting just his second, and Danny Santana's like, dude, I'm not going to be the only one with one. So he hits one. Here's Cesar Hernandez in the seventh. It's 6-2, to two, Minnesota. And Cesar Hernandez goes down swinging. Alex Meyer, a good game here. It's 6-2, to two, Twins. We go to the eighth. Eddie Rosario now. It's 6-4. to four. Twins leading. Runners on second and first. And Rosario is going to roll one to the gap in right center. One run comes in to score. And so does... Byron Buxton, it's eight to four twins. Now Joe Maurer slaps it to left field with a runner on second. He's gonna round third and head to the plate. Here comes the relay and the throw and the tag is not in time. Eddie Rosario comes in to score and it's nine to four Minnesota. The twins go on to win this one nine to four, improving to 37 and 51. Alex Meyer gets the win. He goes seven, gives up four hits, two runs, seven strikeouts, no walks, Charlie Morton. Only goes four innings, gives, gives up 11 hits, five runs. Jorge Polanco, two for four with a homer. Three RBIs on the day for Polanco. Danny Santana homers, as does Kenny Vargas. All right, we're looking at potential left field acquisitions. Some guys that I really like. Braxton Davidson in the Atlanta Braves system. A 59 overall at the moment. He's only 21 from North Carolina. He is a B potential. Uh... Very good plate discipline. Average fielder right now, but lots of room to improve at only 21. Also in the Brave system, James Kaneko. His potential is a B. He's 21 years old. He's from Japan. Really good durability. Great arm strength and arm accuracy. Uh, the bats just got to come around a little bit. And Ty Kelly in the New York Mets organization. He is a B potential Decent contact hitter at the moment. He's 66 overall right now. He is 28 years old, though, from Texas, so not sure how much higher he can, can go. Tyler Goodell from the Philadelphia Phillies, who we are playing in a series right now. Very decent uh, contact hitter. Good durability. Really a good fielder uh, outside of arm accuracy, and his overall potential is a B. Reimer Liriano from the Milwaukee Brewers organization. He has very good arm strength, very good reaction speed, and we're just waiting for his bat to come around. He is 25 from the Dominican Republic, a B potential. Also, Rymel Tapia. I really like this guy from the Colorado Rockies organization. He is a really good contact hitter already and uh, decent durability. He's an okay fielder, but I really like the contact numbers for Rymel Tapia. All right, those are the left fielders we could look at as we continue to make deals heading towards the trade deadline. Final game of the three-game series with the Philadelphia Phillies. It is the last game before the All-Star break. Both teams in throwback jerseys. Irvin Santana gets the nod for us. He's got a 3.33 ERA, 102 strikeouts to 27 walks for Big Irv. Jake Thompson tabbed the starter for the Phillies. Making just his sixth start, he's got a 2-1 record, a 3.18 ERA, a 1.27 whip in 28 and a third innings for Jake Thompson. We start this one off in the third. Joe Maurer to the plate with one out. Runners on first and second, a 2-2 count. Here's the delivery from Thompson and Maurer with a line drive into right center field. A little top spin on that one, and it gets down. Run comes in to score. And the Twins jump out to a one to nothing lead despite having six hits. Fifth inning. Big Irv with runners on second and third and two outs. 3-2 delivery. Drive deep to left center field. Going back is Buxton at the wall. And then he's gone into the bullpen. J.P. Crawford with his seventh of the year. That's a three-run home run. And the Phillies in the middle of five jump out to the three to one lead. Eddie Rosario. Up now for the Twins in the bottom of the fifth inning with a runner on first. And Rosario lines it into right field. Will that one stay up? It does. It carries a line drive home run for Rosario, and that ties the game. Twelfth of the year for Eddie. At the end of five, we're all tied up at three, so the Twins get back to even really quickly in this one. Juan Uribe, an ageless wonder. At the plate, here's the delivery from Big Irv. Aribe pops it up. 
John Ryan Murphy behind the plate. He makes a beautiful sliding catch on the foul ball. The middle of sixth. We're all tied up at three. We go to the seventh, Fernando Abad, his 30th appearance. Pretty much just a lefty versus lefty guy, and he's on to face J.P. Crawford who is one for three on the day and has the home run. Runners on the corners, and Crawford lines it up the middle. Run comes in to score, and the Phillies take the lead. J.P. Crawford hitting well for the Phillies this year. Here's Joe Maurer now in the bottom of inning number seven. And Maurer slices it into the gap in left center. That one is going to two-hop the wall. One run comes in to score. Another one is heading for the plate and will score easily as the throw comes in short. Joe Maurer with his 18th double of the year. Two RBIs gives the Twins a 5-4 lead at the end of seven. Ninth inning. Back and forth baseball game here at Target Field. Jake McGee comes in. Still looking for save number 23. He's blown two in a row. Will this be the night that he gets save number 23? Dylan Cousins steps into the box with a runner on first. A home run here would give the Phillies the lead. And the runner is going. Here comes the throw. And he is gunned down by John Ryan Murphy. A beautiful throw. And the Twins hold on. Jake McGee does finally get his 23rd save. Michael Tonkin gets the win. He only pitched a third of an inning, one strikeout. Brett Oberholzer with the loss. As he pitched three innings, gave up five hits and two runs. Eddie Rosario was three for four with a home run and two RBIs. J.P. Crawford for them, two for four with four RBIs and a home run. All right, at the conclusion of this episode of Twins Franchise, the Blue Jays are six games ahead of the Sox still in the Central we are still tied with the White Sox at 38-51. and 51. The Indians, four games over the Royals, five over the Tigers. They are lengthening out their lead. The Mariners, lengthening their lead over the Astros and the Angels, who are four and a half back. The Rangers, six and a half, and the A's, seven and a half. The Nationals have picked up three games on the Marlins from the outset of this episode. The Marlins are now 13 back. The Cubs, ten and a half ahead of the Cards, 11 over the Pirates, 15 over the Reds. And out in the West, the Dodgers with a six and a half game lead over the Giants. The Rockies are 11 back at 46 and 45. All right, guys, coming up next is the All Star break. We'll have a little home run derby action for you, as well as the 2017 All Star game from Marlins Park in Miami. Don't miss it. It's Minnesota Twins franchise on Mama's Basement. <laughs> 